Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at TTGS09 Transformers Generation Selects Super Megatron. I thought about pretending like having some suspense, ooh what's in the box, but then I realized you're just going to have seen the thumbnail so you know what this is. This is one of those deals where it's like a box inside a box, so this outer box just says GS09. doesn't even say Super Megatron anywhere on it, which I think is kind of funny. Very similar to what the Seacons came in. Uh, where it just kind of had the number on the outside and didn't really tell you what's inside. But if you go ahead and open this up and then slide this out, you can see this outer box that says Generation Selects Super Megatron. And this is really more of just a slip cover. Not too much going on the back here, but if we go ahead and slide this off, this has the Decepticon symbol, says Transformers Generation Selects. Pretty similar to the standard Generation Selects packaging. Uh, it's that kind of cardboard quality, although it actually has a Decepticon symbol instead of an Autobot symbol, and it's obviously much more clean than the kind of like spray-painted look they go for with most of the Generation Selects boxes. But if we go ahead and open this, eventually there will be a Transformer inside. So here we go. Here is Super Megatron. And we lift the tray out so we can get a better look at him. You know what, I'll just move this box out of the way. So there we go. After like six layers of packaging, we finally have Super Megatron packaged here in jet mode. So pretty neat. I'm going to go ahead, free him from this plastic prison, and then we will take a closer look. So here he is in the jet mode. This is how he comes packaged. It's kind of neat. Definitely have a large kind of fuselage section. Got some tank treads here on the top instead of fins. Kind of wish there were some kind of little fins back here, but that's fine. I get it. Uh, the jet wings look pretty good. You have these kind of missile pods here on the front. You have a little canopy up here. Underneath, uh, you can kind of see the arms just completely folded. You have this little bit of tank tread there. He doesn't really sit like he kind of always leans back because... Those hands kind of always bunched up there. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could unpeg those. They do unpeg, I promise. Very snug. But you could unpeg those and then just kind of like push them against the body so that he lays a little bit flatter. It's up to you. I mean, obviously the official transformation is to have these pegged in like so. But, I don't know. They just kind of hang there so much lower than the entire rest of the jet. And he's never going to sit, you know, nicely in jet mode. He doesn't have any kind of landing gear or anything like that to pop out. Well, he's got these old tank treads in the front. That's about as close as you'll get. But unfortunately, he can't balance between that and the arms. Because he's got too much weight in the front and the back. So he leans back. But it's a cool little jet mode. I like it. I'm not too familiar with the character of um, Super Megatron, I'll be honest. Apparently he is from Return of Convoy, which was uh, much later on. I believe it was only a manga. I don't even think it got a show. And it's what Star Convoy is from. So this was years after the shows and everything ended. Um, probably pretty close to the start of Beast Wars, I would think. <laughs> Almost right before we had Beast Wars over here, they had uh, Return of Convoy, which had Star Convoy and Super Megatron. So... That is what this guy is from. But yeah, pretty cool little jet mode. Let's go ahead and transform him into robot mode. So transformation is actually pretty simple. The entire fuselage section here is going to just unpeg and flip around to the back. And actually, you can just completely take it off. It'll just completely unpeg from this section. And you just put that off to the side for now. Uh, you're going to take these sections with kind of the gun pods and just kind of completely flip them up like so. You're going to flip this part into the chest like this. You're going to flip this part down, flip out the head. Then you're going to rotate this around 180 and fold that into the chest like so. You're going to unpeg the legs from each other and then kind of flip them down. And these will kind of like pop up and kind of snap into place. So they kind of collapse into each other and then that snaps into place. The feet will flip down and then the tank treads will actually flip completely around and fill in that empty space in the back of the leg, which I think looks really nice. That's really well done. So just completely flip that around like so. 
you're going to flip these around like this. Then you're going to spin the entire waist 180 degrees like that. So you can see the robot mode is pretty much taking shape at this point. You're going to come around to the back. I actually think this is pretty cool. So this is going to completely fold like this. Then you're going to fold this again. You can see that there's a big tab right there. That's going to tab in right there. So go ahead, tab that in, and then rotate this section down like so. Do the exact same thing with this one. Fold it in, peg it, rotate it down, and then it just kind of stores nicely on the back there. They kind of meet perfectly. Looks really sharp and clean. I really like that a lot. Great storage for the wings. At this point, you're pretty much done. You're just going to unpeg those arms like I showed earlier. Straighten those out. Flip that down, and then you have hands inside the forearms, and they're just going to rotate around. You can hear nice ratchet joints on those. And there you go. You are pretty much done. All that stands to finish. Take the giant cannon. You can see that there is a giant peg hole right there and a giant peg on the side of his arm. You just peg that right on there. And there you go. There is Super Megatron in robot mode. He looks pretty good. I really like the color scheme. Obviously the lighter gray with the darker gray and the red all really pops together. You got that nice little bit of Decepticon symbol purple there on the chest. Taking a look at the head sculpt. Pretty cool. He's got kind of like... I can't tell if that's supposed to be his mouth is open. I think it's weird lips and a giant kind of like chin square. I think that's what's going on there. But yeah, it's neat. I like the really red eyes. I think that looks really good. Overall, it's a pretty cool robot mode. Articulation-wise, he's got head on a ball joint, so you have some up and down, side to side. You can tilt back and forth. You have nice uh, joints here in the shoulder. You have a rotation. You have pretty tight ratchet there in the uh, shoulder hinge. You have a bicep swivel there. You have double jointed elbows, obviously for that transformation with the arms, but to come in handy. Uh, really nothing in the wrist because they fold into the forearms. You do have that uh, spin at the waist that we saw when I moved that 180 for part of the transformation. Now once you have the wings down here, uh, it kind of gets in the way and hinders that articulation a little bit, but you can still move it a little bit. You have these little kind of like skirt pieces you can move out to the side so that you can get uh, kicking out to the side, all the way to the front. Uh, pretty much just stuffed by the wings back here. But you have nice rotation and hinge there in the hip. You have a thigh swivel. You have pretty much 90 degrees in the knee. And then you have a little bit of ankle tilt. And a little bit of front to back as well and side to side. So pretty decent articulation. I like the fusion cannon on his arm. Pretty massive. Means business. I like it. So yeah, all in all, I think he's got some really nice articulation, and I like this robot mode. Now he does have a bit of a, like, this is Super Megatron, but there is an Ultra Megatron mode. So if we go ahead and we take this off for the moment. Now this is where it gets a little weird. So you have to flip back the Megatron head, and the directions tell you just to rotate like his bandana which you can do on its own, but he's also got a different face. So just for the sake of showing you both at the same time, I'm going to rotate everything. And it's a little difficult to rotate this stuff, I gotta be honest. Um, just because it's a, it's a little cumbersome and weird to get to in the way it rotates around. So I'm gonna do my best here. There we go, is it rotating around? Yes, I think so. So this is definitely a little weird. Um, sometimes I like to just kind of use tweezers or something to kind of get it to rotate around because it's a little awkward to grasp it. So you can rotate that piece around as you can see and then you can rotate the entire face around. And the directions right now show you just to do the bandana piece like this top piece but I'm going to do both just for the sake of showing you both. So you can see he's got this kind of like I don't even know what you would call that, but the second face sculpt, it's kind of a cool mask. I think it's really neat. So you can rotate both of those around. You can actually bring down the chest plate, rotate this 180 degrees, and pop it back in. So now he's got a different chest plate as well. 
and then you're supposed to uh, unfurl the wings. So I like to kind of just leave them like this so that there's enough clearance for everything. But flip the wings back out. And then there's a little bit we're supposed to do here with this. This will actually flip open like this. And there's little tabs right there that will peg in right there. So you just peg that in on both sides. Then this will lift up like this. And trying to get this piece out is kind of difficult. Again, I kind of like to bring the tweezers in just because <laughs> some of these things are kind of really tight in here. But anyway, there you go. Once you get that out, you can flip this and pop this all the way out. Now you're supposed to close this back up and then you're supposed to attach this to his arm. I really don't understand what this is supposed to be. Maybe it's a shield or something. I'm not 100%. But you're just supposed to peg this giant block onto his forearm where the gun was. I don't know. I think that looks kind of dumb. But then you're supposed to take this piece and peg it in up here on the shoulder. And that looks kind of neat. So let me go ahead and get this done. Some of these pegs are really, really tight. Especially with this cannon piece here. So there you go. And then this is Ultra Megatron. So it's kind of neat. Um, pretty significant change. You have a different chest plate. If you decide to use the normal face with just the different bandana, that's up to you. Like I said, I decided to use both because I kind of feel like what's the point of having that second face if you don't use it? The directions never officially tell you when that mask is supposed to be used. They just, at the very end, after everything else, they just have a little footnote that's like, oh yeah, you can move the mask around too. So I don't know what it's for, but I like the look of it here because I feel like this chest plate has a little bit more of the darker gray. So I kind of like the look of the darker gray mask with this setup. So I'm choosing to use it here. Uh, I think this is kind of neat, this kind of shoulder cannon. I don't really know what's going on with this. I mean, if you really want, you can just uh, push this back down. If you want to unpeg these, you can uh, just go ahead if you want to just use it as a fusion cannon again, you know, you, it's perfectly easy to do. I guess technically you're also supposed to push this piece down. So maybe that's like a barrage, missile barrage. I don't know. I don't know what the square is for. I really don't understand it. But I do like the look of this. I think the wings out is cool. And you can, again, kind of tweak these how you want. Bring them in as much as you want. You know, you can do a little bit. There's a little bit of posability options there. So you have the wings. I kind of wish there was a way to like bring the wings around so that they were kind of like up here more. Like if I could rotate this whole section like 180, I think that would be really neat. There's obviously no way to do that. But I just think if the wings could be a little bit higher and like turned around, they would look cooler. But other than that, I think this is a pretty cool setup. I think it's neat that he has a different chest plate and a different face. So you have Super Megatron and Ultra Megatron. Either way, pretty cool. So he's got one more alt mode. He's got a tank mode in addition to the jet mode, which is pretty cool. I've gone ahead and removed the turret here and the square piece that was on his forearm. I also went ahead and just moved the face back to normal just because it's easier to do that off camera. You don't necessarily have to. I think to transform it, you can put the head back into the chest in whichever configuration you want. It's not like it takes up any more room. I just wanted to put it back to the normal Megatron head. So you are going to go ahead, open this up, flip the head in there close that back up and then flip out this piece here that gives that little bit of tank tread you're going to fold the hands back into the forearms so do that on both and then you're going to go ahead and peg this back in so you can see that there's just a tab here and that tabs into that obvious slot right there on the shoulder so go ahead and peg that in then you're going to come down to the wings and we're going to fold them back up exactly like we were transforming them back into robot mode so go ahead and do that and then they'll just kind of stay there with the feet we're going to want to pop out those treads that we have in the back so flip that around and bring that around to the sides there there we go then we're going to want to uh, bring these uh, feet around so we have to turn them to the side and you want to kind of unclick them like this 
Now on the side here, there's the tiniest little peg. Kind of looks like home plate. And that's going to peg into this tiny little spot here on the top of the like knee guard, I guess. So you're going to kind of bring this in and kind of situate it. It doesn't peg in completely or anything, but just kind of, you know, situate this in a way that you can get this up here to peg in. And that should peg in pretty tightly. And then you have uh, this tank tread where you need it. You can go ahead and put the feet back in there like that. So do the same. Collapse this down. This is going to come up and peg in. Whoops, I'm trying to peg it into the wrong spot. Just be careful because this has the larger peg. You want to peg into this one underneath. A lot of times I accidentally try to peg into the larger one until I remember that's not right. So kind of just bring this in a little bit closer. Pop that foot in there like so. So at this point, you're pretty much done. You're going to flip these back up. And then you're actually going to flip these pieces forward 90 degrees like so. And then you're going to kind of sit this down here like so. Let me adjust the camera a bit. We're going to come back to these two pieces. We're going to open this back up. We're going to peg in the cannon piece and close it back up. And then this little peg right here is going to peg in to this peg spot right here. Like so. And there you go. There is your tank mode. It's not the best. It's all right. It's not bad. But I think the jet mode is a little better. Uh, there's a lot of negative space in here. But I mean, he does have these tank treads. Then this is just kind of the forearms acting as, uh, you know, the other part of the tread. And you have this little bit of tread back here. So it's not the best. But I mean, it's got a turret that can spin. And you even have a little bit of movement here as well. So that's kind of cool. And I mean, you when you look at it, you can tell it's a tank. You know, you just have these wing pieces here and here, which take focus away from the cannon a little bit. I think if the cannon was a little bit longer... It might not be the case, but because these kind of hang out right underneath the cannon and the cannon's not much longer, I feel like the wings take away a little bit. I mean, you can even lift this up. So really, you do have a ton of range of motion in the turret. So I'll give them that at least. Um, yeah, it, it's perfectly fine. It's not, you know, is it the best tank mode I've ever seen? No, but it's functional. It has a lot of range of motion for the turret, which you don't see a lot. And uh, yeah. It's not bad. Not bad. So I wanted to do a quick little group shot with the Takara Tomi uh, Generation Select Star Convoy that they did a while back. Uh, because obviously these two are both from Return of Convoy. So if you're going to put them on the shelf together, you'd have them squaring off against each other. And as you can see, Star Convoy is a little bit taller. I would say he's roughly like a head to two heads taller. I would say Megatron's head probably comes to about, you know, not quite the shoulders, but maybe just slightly underneath. So he's definitely a little bit shorter than Star Convoy, but the two definitely look cool together. So I'm really happy to have both of them. I think they look pretty neat. So I really like Super Megatron a lot. Honestly, a lot more than I thought I was going to. When this was first announced, I had no idea what it even was. I obviously have no connection to the character. Never read Return of Convoy. Uh, I didn't even know that that's what this was from at first. I just saw, oh, this is a weird Megatron repaint slash remold of Titans Return Galvatron. That's weird. Then I did a little bit of research, found out what he was from, and I'm really glad I decided to pre-order him. I mean, as far as being a remold of Titans Return Galvatron, it's almost unrecognizable. I can really only see it in the legs. I think that's obviously the most noticeable part. But pretty much all the rest of this guy is extensively retooled, and he looks really nice. Fantastic color scheme. You know, the two tones of gray with the red really pop. It really, really looks sharp. Uh, super ton of playability on this. You have the Super Megatron robot mode. You have the Ultra Megatron robot mode. And yes, granted, they're not crazy different, but it's a decent amount of transformation. You have two different chest panels, two different head configurations. I mean, if you mix and match the kind of headband with the face, really, you have four different possible configurations. Uh, you have some, you know, weapon, different weapon assortments and or alignments, whatever you want to call that, configurations you can do with the weapons. 
Uh, two different alt modes, the jet and the tank. I think the jet's a little bit more successful, but the tank's not bad for what it is, honestly. It's recognizable as a tank. The turret has a lot of posability, you know, maneuverability and all that, so I'm actually pretty impressed with that because even dedicated tank modes these days don't always have that much going on in the turret mode as far as being able to move it around, position it, move the actual cannon up and down. This guy has all that, so I honestly like him a lot. I really, really do. He was kind of a surprise. But I kind of love them, and especially having Star Convoy already, I'm really glad I picked them up so I have the set because they look good together. I wish they were a little bit closer in size, but it makes sense considering this guy was a Voyager and he was a leader class, so they're not going to be the same size. But they still look good together, and even just by himself, Super Megatron is a ton of fun, looks great, and I'm really glad I decided to pick them up. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks so much for watching.